Welcome to Behind the Lectern. Since 2006, your host, Jeff Klein, has been working with speakers at all levels. From beginners to Toastmasters International Award winners. From experts to National Speaker Association Hall of Famers. In each episode, Jeff introduces you to some of these speakers as you learn about their speaker journey, how they got started, where they came from, where they're going, and more. Take the lessons they have learned on their way to help you with your own path to make speaking work for you. Let's get started. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Lectern. I'm excited by a guest today has stepped in when we needed somebody to fill in, and I appreciate that a lot. Thank you, Lorraine Dunford Hill. Uh, Lorraine is an early childhood resource consultant with over 40 years of experience working with therapists, children, and parents. Currently, she is working on masterminding her second career after retirement in 2021. Lorraine supports families with parenting issues and works one-on-one -on -one with children. She has recently developed an eight-week course called Five Steps to Taming the Anger Monster. This program helps fill your toolbox so you can bring connection, calmness, and joy back into your life. Can we do that with adults too, Lorraine? Oh, uh, 100%. <laughs> I think that's where it needs to start. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Thank you so much for, for filling in. Um, first off, we... we uh, we met through the Speaker's Playhouse and, and all the, that great crowd of folks. And uh, for those of you who don't know, every Thursday we spend 90 minutes together talking about where to speak and who we need to speak. And it's well worth your time. I'll put the link in the show notes. If you're a speaker of any sort or aspire to be one, you should definitely join us at Speaker's Playhouse. Uh, Lorraine, tell me how you got started speaking. Well, I've been a Toastmaster since 2007, and it was because of my sister. She was at Toastmaster, and I, I was curious about what this table topics meant or, you know, giving a speech. I was very curious, crying. I was, I was easily. And I, I couldn't understand that because my job was talking with parents and explaining things to parents. But when I stood up in front of everybody, it was like, blah, 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 blah. nothing would come out properly. And so I thought this wasn't for me, but it is a, something that sort of drove me. I need to get better at this. I want to get better at this. And it was through that practice and practice and practice that it helps, it helps sort of hone the skill, you know, and, and now I've, you know, been every part of Toastmasters, you know, the president, secretary, all those different roles. And now people look to me as a mentor, whereas before I, I took every advice from everybody because I needed that help. And now I just love watching someone come in and they're just nervous and, and tense. And then by giving them a few little tips here and there and giving them feedback, it can change how they do things. And people have gone on to do much better things as they, as they grow. That's great. So you discovered, uh, well, you were, you were, you had to speak inside your bit, your current job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you went to, to get better at it. And you, did you start competing and doing some of the, that stuff at Toastmasters? Yes. Yeah, I did. Um, you know, the different speaking we have, you know, doing humorous stories. We have, sort of tall tales you can do evaluations and you can be toast international toastmaster so all those things helped build skills and also what i've noticed i'm building more skills i even though i've been in it for a long time the people that i meet on speakers playhouse and for example you they're so good at giving information to other people they're, they're not holding everything back they are just giving you information and it doesn't matter how good of a speaker you are somebody always has another trick that goes oh I never thought of that oh that's you know amazing uh, I've been taking a lot of programs on you know story writing and um, with Tammy and script scriptpreneur and she just gives you those little insights and you go 
that's really going to add to my speaking ability. So it, it is a great community because everybody is so, so supportive of each other. Sure. And for those of us who are lifelong learners, it, it's a really good fit because mm-hmm. there's always something new to learn. Yes. Now, when did you start or did you speak outside of work at all before this new career venture? Outside of work, it was more um, like the Optimist Club. I did a speech there, and but most of it was done through work. And I was taking a course on self-regulation, and of course, I had to do some presentations there. So I did, you know, keep honing my skills a little bit more. Sure. But I have definitely learned a lot because of of what I've been doing in the last year. Really focusing on getting a message out there that people need to hear. So tell us, we'll, we'll talk a little more about how speaking is going to help you do that, but tell us about the message that you're speaking about now. <laughs> well, right now, I, I sort of wanted to put it in a little niche of talking about anger management, because I'm finding that the world around us, people are angry. And I found when I was looking back and reflecting on that, all of our ways of dealing with anger came from our family of origin. We, you know, we learn how to deal with anger, whether we learn to yell, scream, hit, temper tantrum, or like myself, I learned to stuff everything down. I learned to just keep it all inside. Children should be, you know, seen, not heard. And you just, you just dealt with it that way. And so looking back on that, I never learned how to effectively argue or have a disagreement. And then that started to have an effect on my body as I realized that, you know, I'm I'm not feeling well or anytime I get angry, I could feel it in my heart or pains. So I realized that this anger that I was still holding on to whether it was from my marriage or for whatever, was affecting my body. But one of the aha moments came. It was the first year after my ex had left. And I'm out shoveling the snow, shoveling the snow, and I'm crying and crying and crying. And I was saying, if I only had a husband, I wouldn't have to do this. And... About five minutes later, I started laughing hysterically. My neighbors must have thought I was crazy. I went, I had a husband, and I still had to shovel the snow. So it was all about changing what, what you say to yourself. Because, yes, it was true that, you know, if I had a husband, maybe I wouldn't have had to do it. But it was also true that I had a husband, and I still had to shovel the snow. So it was a change in my mindset that started to make me think about anger. And then I had the golden opportunity to start teaching a course on anger. And that was, that opened my eyes so much because I learned, every time I taught it, I learned it, learned something new. And that's so true. If you teach, you can learn. It's definitely. How did that come about? I just got offered a job through the school board to teach parents about anger. So they were really looking for people, and oh, wow. uh, I got that job opportunity. And I taught it for, I think, about 10 years. And it was great because of the feedback, because some people were mandated to be there. Some people just came for interest, and it was a wide range of people. So it challenged your speaking because you had to, to touch different people at different education levels and yeah. different motivations. So your speaking had to to hit all those little pieces. And so that was that was very interesting. So that sort of opened my eyes to how different people learn. Hmm. Okay. And now that's part of what you teach now. You've incorporated the the ways people learn and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And then, you know, I I'm not saying that I never get angry and we all, we all have a little dip in, in our anger, but then I came across um, self-regulation 
And that is all about making sure that when we feel that anger, that we put in place ways that we can restore that energy because anger drains us and we need to figure out a way to restore our energy. So combining what I knew about anger and then self-regulation, it's tied it all up in a nice little bow that I can share with other people. And what I'm so learning from everybody is how to present this. I'm still working on it. It's work in progress, but it is the best way to present it to others out in the community. Got it. So how do you, um, what is your, what's your main approach? Well, or I, I take that back. What I wanted to ask, uh, it just slipped my mind. What terminology do you like to use when you're talking about this stuff? Well, I find that we need to look at it um, in five sort of points. So what you need to, when, when you're feeling anger, anger is just an emotion. We can go positive or negative with anger. And most people go negative. But anger just means that you need to do a change. It just signifies to your, your body or your mind, a change needs to happen. So you can either take it a negative way or you can take it a more positive way. But if you're thinking of the five key points of anger, I like to think about if if you're breathing through it and thinking about it and sort of slowing yourself down, is you go up to your thumb and you reframe. You think about that. You reframe how you're seeing the situation. You know, kids aren't out to get me. That guy isn't really a jerk all those things that you're saying to yourself. It's, you know, maybe they just don't have the skills to deal with that. And I had to shovel snow anyway, when I had a husband. Yeah. So just reframing, reframing everything that you're saying to yourself when, when you feel that anger come on. And then you're going to see what's happening in your body. So you're going up the second finger and okay, my teeth are grinding, my jaw is tight. And take sort of an inventory of your body and then try and release that by understanding where you're feeling that tension. And then you're going to reduce that tension. And you can choose, okay, I can go for a walk. So you're going up to your third finger, you can go for a walk, I can listen to music, I can write in a journal, breathe, and then you're going down. And then your next hurdle is okay, why did that trigger me? What, what was the reason for that? So you're sort of reflecting. You're, okay, that's, you know, because they did this or because they did that, that's why I was triggered. And then the last finger is restore. What am I going to do to get to that win-win? How am I going to get rid of this anger and deal with it? And by preparing for conflict resolution, then you're going to be able to sort of breathe again and get down the other side. So you're just sort of, if you just take the time to go and just walk through all those steps, you're going to come to a a solution. Got it. Okay. So do you prefer conflict resolution as a terminology instead of anger management or are are they the same thing or just related? Yeah, I, I'm really struggling with that. And maybe you can help me with that because I don't think it's anger management per okay. se because anger, we can make it into a positive thing. Okay. So I, I am struggling a little bit with that. And so that's uh, one area that I do need clarification on because, you know, yes, all my teachings have been about anger management, but my gut feeling is it's to... Dec- reduce the yeah. Well, I, I wonder about yeah. That's a term that the courts use. Yeah, when they yeah. make somebody go take mandatory mm-hmm. anger management, and the yeah. and and I think it may be if you're asking people to opt in for it, it may be that that's not the right phrasing to get people to choose it themselves. Yes, um, and that's why I was struggling with I was calling it taming the anger monster because. I've worked with children for so long. I could just yeah. see that monster. 
because I had one of the kids draw a monster one day. And it was with the arms out, with the hands on the hips. And that was their version of a monster. And I nice. thought, that's perfect. So, again, a lot of my examples when I do my teaching is based on what I've seen in children. But I also can relate to adults. Well, it could be anger reframing, even though that's not super powerful. Mm -hmm. um, or reframing anger. Mm -hmm. uh, or even... Uh, even managing anger sounds better than anger management. Yes. Even if it's the same word, it's just the emphasis is in a different place. Uh, and I think maybe maybe a word like structuring or redirecting or now nah, I'm obviously just kind of spitballing uh, yes. some ideas to, to, to think about. And for those of you listening or watching this podcast, if something strikes you and you go, that's it, that's the one, send, uh, send Lorraine a message. Her <laughs> info will be in the, in the show notes. Um, so you, you, Toastmasters helped you be a good on-the-job speaker. Mm -hmm. You spoke a lot to get better on the job and at Toastmasters. You did one or two outside talks. Was that like through the Toastmaster Speaker Bureau? Uh, sometimes, yeah. And sometimes yeah. it was just, you know, Somebody asked me Somebody to do asked, something. Yeah. Uh, and then last, then 2021, <laughs> it's time to reinvent Lorraine and mm -hmm. speaking is a major part of it. Yes. Yeah. And getting my story out and, and just figure, figuring out a new career in life, you know, sure. I, you know, I've got 40 years of information, you know, packed away in this head and I need, need to share that. Yeah, absolutely. And so, I, I thought, Sorry. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I find that with Speakers Playhouse um, or anything like even the Speakers Co-op, it is that sounding board that you need because you may have this idea and it sounds like a great idea to you, but until it comes out of your mouth and somebody else hears it, it really affects the way, you know, your, your message comes sure. across. So. Sure. And, and I think that you know, looking back at the title, The Anger Monster, I think I think that's pretty good. I mean, Taming the Anger Monster, I think you, there's a lot to, lot to work with there, and it's not age-specific. It's, yeah. fr it's friendly language for kids, but it's not, un it doesn't alienate adults. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and sometimes when we're, when we're marketing to children, we use language that doesn't work for adults, but I... I I think the five steps to taming the anger monster. Now, I might and uh, I might consider a different word besides steps. You know, mm -hmm. may, maybe because steps implies you like you go from one to the other to the other, mm -hmm. and it may be that you can do it the job with just one of the steps. Is that am I? Is that accurate? Is it five ways, or do um, you need to do all five steps and build? into that i almost think it is steps because you okay. have to to go through everything to be able to negotiate because if you well you could i guess if you could stop at the first one well i don't care you right know, refrain, but, if, I don't but care. if you need one before two and and all five is the best way to to to, yeah. to make everything work then you do call then steps is the right mm -hmm. is the right right now yeah. so yeah. So never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it it is hearing it, and I might go back and go, yeah, he was right. And I think it's it's that reflection. It you know, it's with anything that we do, with the anger, with our speaking abilities. It's going back and reflecting. Oh, that I, that was interesting that that caught his attention, or oh, I wonder why that didn't fly with him. So I think that when we're on our speaking journey, it is a a good way, I you know, practice, practice, practice. They say, sure. but but having people sounding back to you is going to help you in the long run. Now you work with people in groups and individually. Yes, yes. Are and you when I first started doing the anger course, I did it one on one with someone. The next time I did, it, I did it as um, I videotaped everything and then just sent the person 
the videos. And then the last time, the last session was one-on-one. -on -one. And she went, ooh, I like the one-on-one -on -one better than just reading the videos. It was definitely a difference. Hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. So what are your plans for speaking now? Well, I would like to do some speaking engagements. I want to get some words out there and I want to connect with my network. So it has been difficult because I work with day, used to work with daycares and childcare. And of course, parents can't come into the centers anymore. So there's not the connection that there used to be. So I have to think differently about how I'm going to connect. But I think it's definitely networking with the people I know and figuring things out. There's lots of great things out there for people to connect with. So I think that, you know, just putting my name out there, feeling confident about networking and believing that I have something to share, but other people have things to share. Like sure. I would have no problem, you know, telling people, oh, go to Jeff. He's got some great ideas. And I think that as we network like that, we are able to expand more because we, we are helping each other. Um, so what's next? What, what's the, uh, I mean, we talked a little bit about the current plans actually not what's next. Who do you want to be in front of? That's sorry. That's my next question. Okay. Who would I want to be in front of? I think it's in front of anybody who is wanting information that, and I think, you know, we we're supposed to narrow it down, but I feel that I can, you know, help parents. I can help people who are just struggling, you know, I'm definitely not the type of person that can handle the person who's, you know, anger is, you know, sending them to jail or doing all those things. That's not where I'm at. I'm thinking of the you and me who, who just want to understand anger better and be able to deal with it and being able to move forward. A more corporate than community, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. yeah. All right. And what, so the uh, civic organizations might be a good place, like the Optimist Club, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, the even the, the Chamber of Commerce might be a good place. Yeah. Uh, something else to consider is some is women's organizations, mm -hmm. even like the w women business organizations, because for every profession there's a women's and I, auxiliary is the wrong word, but there's a women's association. You know the. Mm -hmm. The Women's Association of Realtors, the Women's Association of Engineers and uh, Lawyers and Creatives and, I mean, what have you. That might be fertile ground for you mm -hmm. um, as far as the, uh, the speak to get paid circuit. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, parent, as you mentioned before to me, about parenting groups and, and making sure that I'm on those. Again, COVID is, is limiting a lot of things because I, I feel that if it wasn't COVID, I would be able to go and stop into these places. Sure, yeah, you can do. do the doors would have opened a little bit easier, yeah. but um, doing it all virtually, it's it's trying to figure out how to get in front of those stages. Right, right, and yeah, it just takes a little bit more work, a little bit more follow up for sure, mm -hmm. uh, and and meet up and event bright. Have you know some of the groups you want to be in front of are advertising themselves there. Or some are doing it yeah. on. You know, on Facebook, what I've discovered, and again, I don't know, I'm not a, I'm not a Facebook, a Facebook algorithm expert or anything, but I started liking some, some groups. And for example, I started liking rotaries, <clears throat> but also messaging them asking about, you know, do they have virtual speakers if they're not local? And if they're local, who's your, who's your, <coughs> Who's your speaker coordinator now? And and those that respond, I'm able to, you know, just to get in touch with and see what their speaking needs are. But also more of them are showing up on my feed for me okay. to even though I haven't said that I like them. And what what I've done is I've used the the fact that I like them means that I've messaged them. Yeah. So I may not hear back and I may see that I like the you know like the Rotary in Sydney, Australia, and I go to the message box, 
And I messaged him three years ago and nobody responded. So I go ahead and message him again. And then, you know, may or may not hear back from somebody. But <clears throat> the more rotaries I click like on, the more show up in my feed. So that may be something beneficial to you and, of course, beneficial to our listeners if they're looking to speak to that kind of group. Uh, and, and, you know, this, this podcast is about people's speaker journeys. Mm -hmm. Over at Speaker Co-op, we have events where we talk about, you know, the power of speaking at Rotaries or how many, what kind of groups you can speak at. And, and that kind of education we offer through speakercoop.com. Whereas uh, we try to try to keep behind the lectern um, more pure, I guess that's not the right word, but I want to, I want behind the lectern to be about the guests, not about the education mm -hmm. I offer. And I want it to be about the guests and their speaker journey and the education they offer. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got, so that there are, I'll, I'll, we can even put that in the show notes. There's plenty of, our, there's two opportunities every month to tap into the speaker co-op crowd. And so there's, you can hear, see one of my roommates and hear the other, but uh, yeah, there's the other one. Uh, eight they years so old cute. and one years, one year, well, or maybe a year and a half by now. So. <laughs> well, they keep you in line. They do keep me in line for sure. <laughs> for sure. I definitely think that anybody who wants to be a speaker needs to reach out either to an organization, to the speakers co-op, or any place where they can practice, where they can get information, and they can put themselves in front of the right audience. Because we, everybody wants to hear a good speaker. It, you know, that's what they're there for. They don't want to be bored. They don't want to, you know, waste their time. So the better we can hone our skills, the more we're going to be able to be in front of more people. That's great advice and spot on. You know, whatever it is you're looking to be better at, you need to seek people who are already doing it. Mm -hmm. um, that also goes to that old quote about being this, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, yes, so, uh, and, and speaker, Speaker Co-op can be a, a clearinghouse for places. We have some resource pages there at speakercoop.com. So people can find other groups like Speakers Playhouse, which again, is, it'll be in the show notes for this episode because yeah. uh, we brought it up and we try to keep, <laughs> keep everything uh, accurate and helpful for those of you who are finding us through the podcast world. Uh, what, what Are there any questions... Lorraine, that I should have asked that I didn't? I, I think you were, um, you asked some good questions to make me think about where I'm going, because this is fairly new to me to branch out on my own, to be sort of that entrepreneur. Yes, you know, doing, presenting in front of my coworkers, that's not a problem, because I know the information like that. They're a captive, captive audience in one sense, too, because they have to be there. Right. But it's now finding my audience that really needs needs to hear and wants to hear That's my great. message. That's great. Well, so if you want to reach Lorraine, what's the best way to do it? You can reach me by email at tamingtheangermonster at gmail.com. Okay. Or with um, more from the parenting aspect, mychildisspecial.ca is my website. Have you tried to get the uh, angermonster.com? Um, I tried to get, I think I, my sister and I are working on that. Okay. To try and get that one um, to see if we can, we can uh, do that one. So my, my sister, she's learning. She's also an entrepreneur and she's learning and we, we tend to, you know, move back and forth. So yeah. it definitely you cannot do this in isolation. It no. there's so much to learn. There's, you know, yes, you, you may have a great voice, but there's all that background stuff that you need to put in place everybody, and figure it out. Everybody needs a team. You know, yeah. golf, golf may be one person actually hitting the ball, but Tiger Woods has a caddy 
and he has a half a dozen coaches for different things mm-hmm. as a manager. Uh, it's not a one, one person gig. It's it, you have team, have to have a team around you. Yeah. Uh, you know, no, nobody made it and <clears throat> nobody made it on their own. They all had some for somebody behind them or usually several somebody's behind them. They just got to be the name that, 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 uh, everybody knows, uh, like, most of us didn't hear of any of the guys Bill Gates worked with until later. Uh, yeah. and, uh, but, and Steve Jobs and all the, all those guys, they, they didn't do it alone. Yeah. Uh, they had, they had team they had people supporting him. So that's good. Very good advice, Lorraine. Thank you for that. Uh, so I think, I think we've, we've covered some good ground today and, mm-hmm. I appreciate you being willing to go from a member of our live studio audience to our featured guest this week. And you just never know what's going to happen. Just show hey, up. Like our friend Kimberly Crow says, if somebody hands you a microphone, you say yes. yes. So. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again. Uh, we'll put the info in the show notes. Taming the Anger Monster at gmail.com to book Lorraine to come speak for your group and to be on your podcast. Please reach out to her for that. And this is Jeff Klein with Behind the Lectern and speakercoop.com. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us on Behind the Lectern. You can find an archive of our episodes at BehindTheLectern.com. You can also access useful speaking information at SpeakerCoop.com forward slash education. Join us next time for another great speaker journey with an expert and our host, Jeff Klein. We'll catch you next time.